Mercury and lead are the heavy metals I find elevated most often in my patients. Susan, a CPA, and I changed her name to protect the innocent. But she came to me complaining of fatigue, bloating, and intermittent episodes of her heart racing. Her history was significant and she'd had a number of silver amalgam fillings in her teeth. She was also a regular sushi eater and she'd been getting the flu shot every year for the previous 10 years. It was also very significant that her mother developed Alzheimer's disease in her 50s. So we did a comprehensive nutritional analysis and this found that her mercury level in her blood was elevated. Now when I get a patient with high mercury levels on this screening test and they have health challenges, I feel it's prudent to do further testing to see if there may be an overburden of mercury in the body. So for Susan, we did a DMSA challenge test, which involves taking a chelating drug, DMSA, and this, then we see how much mercury comes out in the urine after the drug. The premise being, if a lot comes out, then there may be an overburden, which may lead to health challenges. We also did genetic testing. That showed she had one ApoE4 gene. This compromises her ability to get rid of mercury. It also raises her risk for developing Alzheimer's disease and coronary artery disease. So the challenge, so, so with the challenge test, Susan's baseline mercury level was low. But after DMSA, it went up to over 10 times the baseline level into the probable overburden range. We decided to treat her with intermittent DMSA along with nutritional support, including a nutrient-dense diet that was low in mercury. Now, supplements may help your body excrete mercury and lead, and these include cilantro, tincture, zeolite, chlorella, garlic, selenium, alpha-lipoic acid, N-acetylcysteine, and vitamins. So why do, you why do you suppose your doctor has never asked you about your mercury exposure? One reason might be, if a doctor believes that overburden of mercury may impact your health, he or she will be labeled as entering into the realm of quackery. At least that's what it seems to be based on many state boards investigations. How can this be, you ask, when there are thousands of studies that document mercury toxicity? There's evidence of the association of mercury levels with coronary artery disease, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune diseases, kidney problems, multiple sclerosis, infertility, food allergies, thyroid problems, arrhythmias, and cardiomyopathy. In addition, mercury levels are associated with various neurological disorders, including tremors, insomnia, polyneuropathy, paresthesias, emotional lability, irritability, personality changes, headaches, weakness, blurred vision, dysarthria, slowed mental response, and an unsteady gait. The truth is, if any doctor does anything different than prescribing the toxic FDA-approved drugs, which have become the standard of care, then he or she is putting at risk the loss of his or her medical license. So after a year of treatment, Susan's mercury levels tested much lower and her symptoms resolved. We pray that she'll never succumb to Alzheimer's disease like her mother. It only takes a few cases where a physician sees the overburden, treats it, and gets a good response and that makes him or her a believer that this is a common problem. You don't need a double-blind, placebo-controlled study that will never be done, by the way, because DMSA is a generic drug with no blockbuster financial potential. So in summary, the main sources of mercury or overburden, the first is amalgam dental fillings. The next is fish and seafood, you can go to gotmercury.org to find how much is in the seafood that you like. Thirdly, vaccines, including most of the flu vaccines, contain mercury in the form of timerosol, which is a preservative. So, let's talk about prevention. Don't allow the dentist to put amalgam, that's the silver-colored fillings, in your mouth. Remember, 
the work of Dr. Weston Price. We can eliminate 99% of cavities altogether with the proper diet. Now studies show that mercury blood levels increase with the increasing surface area of amalgam fillings and having four or more fillings in an adult could have an impact. There are other factors that increase mercury exposure with dental fillings. If you have a mercury containing amalgam that's next to a gold crown or other metal in a bridge work, let's say, then the process of electrolysis can increase mercury release up to tenfold. Now, some of us have that genetic defect in detoxification like Susan did. Remember, mercury binds firmly to the cell structures, many of which are in the central nervous system. The half-life of mercury there is estimated to be 15 to 30 years. That's a mighty long time. It's been great sharing this story with you today. If you want more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button above. This is Dr. Gerhauser. Thanks so much for watching.